Hey everybody, Redacted Tonight is off this week, as you can tell, but in place of the new Redacted Tonight, I have this episode of viewer questions for you. Although this week is going to be much more than just viewer questions, because with the arrest and continued persecution of journalist Julian Assange, uh, I have some extra stuff for you. I am going to play some clips from the protest I was at yesterday in front of the British Embassy here in Washington, D.C., and uh, I spoke, many others spoke. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of those clips in, the, in this episode of Viewer Questions. I'm also going to, uh, to play a, a sneak peek of my interview with George Galloway. He was, a, if you don't know him, he was a former longtime uh, member of parliament in the UK. Now, uh, you know, well-known radio show host, etc. And also a friend of Julian Assange's. Knew him well, knows him well. And uh, anyway, I... I interviewed him just an hour ago, but unfortunately that won't air till next week. So because this is so time sensitive and pressing, I wanted to give you uh, some of that here in this video. So um, we'll get to uh, a clip from the George Galloway interview in a moment. But, you know, obviously these are these are very dark days uh, for press freedom, for uh, Internet freedom, for freedom of speech. There, there's just so many things you can say about what's going on right now with the arrest of Julian Assange. I mean, obviously, we've seen this play out over years, but to to watch the war criminals that he exposed literally prosecute the guy who exposed the war crimes rather than, of course, them going to jail themselves for their war crimes, for their the innocent civilians that have been murdered, for the uh, uh, destruction of so many places around the world, and, and the and the endless you know surveillance of American citizens. Anyway, I could go down the list for a fucking half hour of what WikiLeaks has revealed and what Julian Assange has done to better humanity. But uh, I did the, some of that in the last video, so I'm not I'm not going to give you that many details in this video. But instead, we're going to get to uh, these protests. And by the way, stay tuned for the end of this video. I'll, I'll read off the two winners of uh, uh, a free download of my comedy special. And as always, if you comment on this video, uh, two people will get uh, free copies of my comedy special at LeeCampComedySpecial.com. But we'll get to that in a moment. So, um, let's see. Let, let's talk about this protest. So, I went to a protest yesterday. Uh, it, it was rather small, but part of that was because it was spur of the moment, you know, uh, Code Pink and Popular Resistance called this protest at the uh, British Embassy here in D.C. They called it the moment they heard Assange was arrested, so that only gave them a few hours lead time. Um, but it was also small because we live in a nation of fucking apathetic, vapid-headed freaks. I'm sorry, it's what we are. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't it. No, we're not all that, but we are apathetic. Many Americans are incredibly apathetic, and they, they watch this stuff that is slowly encroaching on their rights, their 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 humanity, their privacy, their soul as a, as a nation, and it encroaches and encroaches and encroaches, and, 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 and this moment with Assange is a new step. It's a new level. We will point to this in the future. And we will say, if we didn't know before then, that's the moment we should have known. That's the moment we should have known that journalism had become illegal, that uh, revealing the truth about our government had become illegal. If we didn't know before, that's the moment we should have known. I'm not saying that that much of this hasn't happened before. I'm not saying that, that whistleblowers haven't been prosecuted before. They very much have. But... This is a, a publisher, a journalist. A anyway, I, I know you, you guys have heard a lot of this before, but anyway, this, this protest was, uh, was relatively small, but isn't that when this matters? Isn't it? When it's fucking a billion people, then okay, that, you, they got it covered. I could go home, you wouldn't notice. You could go home, you, nobody notice. But when it's fucking 40 people, 50 people, 100 people, that's when these protests matter. That's when your input matters more than ever at these things. So yes, this was a small protest in front of the the the, the British embassy. And if you want to make fun of it because it was small, then fine. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. It happened to be small, but that's when a that's when it matters most. But b 
you know, we live in a time where you can get this stuff out to to everybody, whether it was a small number of people at the fucking embassy or not. And so it's that it's all the more important. So I didn't know I was going to speak. They ended up asking me to speak. Uh, so I spoke for a couple of minutes. We're going to play that. We're going to play some of the other people that spoke. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I know many of you live in areas where you can't. The, well, you could go protest, and I hope you do, even if you're alone out there. But uh, that there's just not there's not that much going on. You know, you live in small towns or or wherever. But so so that's why I, I hope you get something out of this um, and can can join in with the protest and and protest your, yourself uh, online for the for the freedom of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, who's also locked up because she refused to. Uh, reveal false truths about, or, or you know, fake um, in, indicting details about Julian Assange. Basically, she has refused to do that, despite telling her story over and over again. She has never said that Julian Assange forced her to leak something or or anything of the such. Uh, cue the clip. This is the British Embassy here in Washington, D.C., where there is a protest beginning, uh, small right now, but mighty, and standing up for truth, standing up for freedom of press. Any group, government, or organization that can be destroyed by the truth surely should be destroyed. It has, we, they have no right to stand and lie to the people who pay their bills. Right. The military-industrial complex, they get a seat at the table. The Wall Street banks get a seat at the table. The National Security Complex gets a seat at the table. The only people that don't get a seat at the table are the people who pay for the table, and that's us. And we've had enough of that, and we're going to stand here, and we're going to continue to stand up for Julian Assange, and we're going to continue to be guilty of the same crime that he's guilty of, and that's the crime of exposing the truth. This is what matters, people standing up for the truth, but as Kevin started to get to, I want to talk about my other talking head media personalities. If you aren't going to stand up for this, what the hell are you going to stand up for? If you aren't going to stand up for freedom of press, freedom of speech, stand up for your own goddamn job then. How about that? Because that's what this is about. This is about freedom of speech. It's about freedom of press. It is, this is nothing new. Publishing leaked documents. Look at the Pentagon Papers. Like Washington Post did it, New York Times did it. This is nothing new. But Julian Assange invented a new way to do it with WikiLeaks. A new anonymous way and it scares the hell out of the ruling elite. Because it means that their, their efforts, their secretive efforts to do what they do, to create wars around the world, to, to extract all of the wealth and all of the resources, it's now open for the people to see. Guess what? That's how this whole government thing was supposed to work. It was supposed to be representative to us. Rep they're supposed to represent our needs, our wants, our desires. And right. instead, it has become a secretive process owned by corporations, and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks outed that. They revealed it. They revealed how this thing works and how disgusting it is. And so he is an example. And it is up to our mainstream media, our regular media, our independent media, citizen journalists, to stand up and say, this is not how it should be. These, you should not be imprisoned for this. You should not be locked up for this. You should not be persecuted for this. And so we should all, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are outside of this issue, we should all stand up for Julian Assange and stand up for WikiLeaks and stand up for what they're doing. I have uh, come out to take a stand as I did uh, when the U.S. Uh, lied us into the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, and how they uh, lied us into believing that Chelsea Manning was this awful, terrible criminal who put us all at risk. And we know that these are all lies, and they're doing this now again with uh, Julian Assange. Uh, we need to take a stand, all of us here, around the country and around the world, and we need to take a stand and know where we stand. We stand on the side of truth for all people. I want to live in a country and a world in which I know the crimes of my government and the corporations and the wealthy people who run this country and, and, and attempt to run the planet. I want to know about their crimes. So yeah, that, that protest was put together by Popular Resist Resistance. Wow, can't talk. Popular Resistance and Code Pink. I hope you check out both of those organizations. 
they're doing great w work on a lot of things, anti-war, uh, anti-Wall Street, Medicare for all, uh, trade deals. They, they, they've honestly, the, the, those two organizations do wonderful things. Um, let's get to the interview with George Galloway. I'm just going to show a couple of minutes of that. He, it, it, he's understandably upset and very passionate about his, his friend, Julian Assange, but not just because it's his friend, but because th th this is just, I can't stress how important this is. You know, Snowden has said, we will remember this in the history books as a dark day for freedom of speech and freedom of press. And absolutely. So it's not whether you know Assange personally or not, this is a dark time for journalism, for revealing the truth. A lot of people have been passing around the image, the, the meme that says, um, first they came for the journalists, and then we don't know what happened next. Get it? Yeah, that's how it works. That's how it works. First you go for the journalists, then you can do whatever the fuck you want. After that, woohoo! fucking dance around the maypole at that point because there's no one to report on your crimes. And and guess what? Most of the mainstream media isn't really reporting on this. Or better yet, they're cheering it on. Yay! Prosecute Assange for revealing the truth about our empire. Woo-hoo! Anyway, uh, George Galloway. Oh, how they cheered when the Prime Minister, the lame duck, trussed up like a turkey waiting <laughs> uh, for the final chop. Theresa May uh, announced that uh, poor Julian had been literally dragged out of the embassy. They cheered uh, to the rafters. They don't have much else to cheer about, and not many people are cheering about them. Uh, but it was uh, the most dispiriting display. Um, of course, there's uh, many a slip, twixt uh, cup and lip, and there's every possibility we can move public opinion in this country such that the government uh, declines the invitation of the United States for extradition. But we have an extremely one-sided extradition treaty with the United States, which abandons all need for the U.S., unlike other countries, to show uh, just cause uh, for that extradition. It's almost automatic, but not quite. We have managed to stop one or two uh, grotesquely unjust, unfair extraditions uh, for a variety of reasons, usually health-related. Well, Julian's in very poor health, as anyone who saw him carried out the other day can testify. And the reality is that the United States cannot give any guarantee that he will not face cruel and unusual punishment, that he will not face torture, maybe not even face the death penalty. And all of these are arguments we're going to be pressing here in Britain to push the government to block the extradition. Julian Assange is a political prisoner, and Britain and the United States went on for decades uh, in support of political prisoners behind the Iron Curtain in the old Soviet Union and so on. They're absolute hypocrites, of course. They are openly admitting he's a political prisoner. Gone are all the pretenses that it was about sexual offences in Sweden or right. jumping bail. Uh, all of that is abandoned now. It's quite clear. He's got to go to the, Amer the United States and face the music for the damage he did to the empire in exposing their crimes against humanity. So like I said, that... Full interview, 15-minute interview will be available on Redacted VIP next week. I just wanted to give you that little bit because I felt like I it, it's such an important interview. I wanted to get some of it to you now. Uh, next week, check out the full 15 minutes with George Galloway, former member of parliament, longtime member of parliament in, in, uh, in, in the UK. And he mentions in that interview that basically the reason he lost his seat in parliament was because he was against the Iraq war. So... He suffered as well as Assange and Manning and so many others who came out against war or, or revealed the truths of war. And by the way, any presidential candidate who fucking can't get up the goddamn balls or the goddamn badge to, to denounce this 
Jeremy, Cor Jeremy Corbyn's already denounced it. To denounce the the uh, arrest of Assange, the extradition of Assange, the imprisonment and persecution of Assange and Chelsea Manning. Any, any presidential candidate who can't do that, they're a sack of shit. All right? And you should stop listening to them. You should, you, they, they've lost your vote. Because what the fuck? If you're not going to stand up for this, what do you stand for? All right, let's get to some questions real quick. By the way, leave a quick comment or a question. I prefer substantive questions, but whatever. Whatever you got to do, do it. Uh, if you leave one, we'll enter you into a... Each week, two, two people get a free copy of... A free download of my comedy special, Not Allowed on American TV, for obvious reasons. Um, it's not, not allowed on American TV. It's only at LeeCampComedySpecial.com. Let's get to the questions. This is Anthony Ormsby. The Republicans have no problem calling us socialists, and we take it. Why don't we call them corporate fascists to strike back at them? I, I think I do that. Don't I do that? I think I do that. I think I call, I think I call corporate fascists corporate fascists. I'm way ahead of you on this, Anthony. I've been calling them fucking corporate fascist dick helmets for years, years now. Years. So, you're welcome, Anthony. This is from Brilliant Wonderful. Which is a, it's a good name, because then people just, uh, like, hey, brilliant, wonderful, and you're like, thank you, thank you, I know, thank you. Uh, brilliant, wonderful says, what has happened to ANSWER, that's ANSWER Coalition, and the IAC, and all the other organizations that used to hold rallies? Well, I'm not going to speak for all of them, some of them uh, may have disappeared, but... Uh, um, some are still around. Answer is still around. You can look it up. Uh, I know Brian Becker, who founded Answer Coalition, and he has a, a show you can listen to every day, a podcast called Loud and Clear. You can listen to Brian Becker talk about anti-war issues and anti-empire issues every day of the week. But I realize that's not a mass protest, but Answer does have still have protests. Uh, I spoke recently at the stop fucking with Venezuela protest uh, in front of the White House uh, last week? No, two weeks ago. So they they, they helped, they were involved in that uh, as well. So, so these protests do exist. I agree they're not as large as they should be. A, because uh, it's harder to get the word out when you're being censored on social media endlessly. Um, so that's part of it. Uh, another part is, again, the apathy that we have in this country. Uh, Americans are told to only... And, and by the way, when I say apathy, it's not just apathy. It's being told to take your anger and funnel it into the wrong directions. If I'm not saying you can't care about the Mueller report, but if all you care about is the Mueller report, then your anger has been redirected away from the target. You should be you should be upset and furious with the ruling elite, with the ruling empire, with the with the fucking with the military industrial complex, with the pharmaceutical industrial complex, with the prison industrial complex. You should be furious about that all the time. You shouldn't just uh, Trump tweeted, ah, uh, but 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 the Mueller report said it, it should. They they're winning if they're getting you to only care about that. Why do you think they cover it twenty four seven? But yeah, they they want you to care about. Of very specific certain things. So, um, but that's why those rallies aren't as big as they used to be. And I hope that changes. I think now is the time. Now is the time to change that. Stephen uh, Noodles. I'm the worst at pronouncing names. I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. But anyway. Lee, can you say, do you know what I mean, like Pat? For all your viewers in Newcastle, UK, please. I uh, there. I, I don't I don't know that expression um, because I'm not from Newcastle. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I hope you said it as your ringtone so you can get a chuckle every day there, Stephen. But uh, <laughs> I assume it's like someone from like the south, southern U.S. saying to someone in Britain, "Hey, can you say?" You ain't from around here, are you, boy? Just for those of us in the South, just so we, we like hearing that stuff. Could you, could you say that? But apparently that's a Newcastle expression. How you doing, Newcastle? I actually have toured the UK. I performed, uh, I don't think I did. Maybe, I, yeah, I performed in Newcastle. I performed in Liverpool. I've been all over the UK. And you missed it. You fucking missed it. You should have been there seven years ago when I was there. You should have come to my show and you didn't. So you are dead to me. You know what I mean, like that? I don't. I don't. I honestly don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what that expression means. 
Uh, <laughs> GL says, still watching. Want to try and come down to D.C. to see your show. Thanks for being there. Peace. Not a question, but thank you, GL. I hope you come down. Everybody come to Redacted Tonight. Come see a live taping of Redacted Tonight. We tape every Thursday, except for this Thursday. So that's why this is up here. Uh, there was a new VIP with Matt Taibbi. So if you didn't see that, fucking go watch that next, because he's fucking good, and he does important work, and he's talking about all this important shit, the $21 trillion at the Pentagon, and the, and the, and the Russiagate, and the collapsing, and all that shit. That's, go watch Matt Taibbi after this. But uh, no new Redacted this week. That's why I'm giving you this instead. Let's see here. Osama, number five. If wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. That's a Julian Assange quote. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Hostile and VO... Oh, volatile. Got it. I don't know why VO is capitalized. Hostile and volatile says... Lee, talk about Mike Gravel, please. All right. Hi, Mike. Uh, Mike Gravel is a former senator who has run for president before. He's running for president again, and his campaign is pretty hilarious, but also he's saying important stuff, as far as I know. I mean, I haven't kept up with, the, like, the day-to-day. -day. I hear his Twitter is amazing. Uh, he's talking about military-industrial complex. He's talking about all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, go check out Mike Gravel. I mean, you know... It is one of these things where he's saying important things, but they're not going to give him the time of day on the media, and I don't think he has the money, uh, and also he's running as a Democrat, so at the end of the day, he's just taking whatever, 2 or 4% and funneling it into the Democrats, I guess. But I guess in the primary, you gotta go go check him out in the primary. I'm not going to decide who you should... Who you should vote for? I like I say I talk to I like to talk about uh, issues rather than than candidates. Um, so uh, you know maybe I'll start checking out more of Gravel's tweets and uh, talking about those issues because what from what I hear he is he's talking about all the important stuff. I actually he I I opened before him, reported for him before him. He, he ran he ran for president years ago against Obama and them, and uh, I I was on the same like stage I did a, I did 10 minutes of comedy and anyway he was pretty of all the fucking clowns up there uh he seemed to be the most truthful so there's a lot of Mike Ravel that's kind of likable he's got some uh, you know some some like wily low Bernie Sanders style Jeremy Corbyn stuff going on that I think is important you know Nader there's, there's some there's, there's something about like old guys they finally well, I guess you can go either way. You can be an old guy and go the Koch brothers direction. You can be an old guy and go the I'm gonna tell the truth. I tell you what, I don't got much time left on this planet, so I'm gonna fucking say it like it is. Fucking corporate media can suck my, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Winners for this week are Light Weaver and A Mares. So to get those, uh, to get the three free special um, email. Lee can't mail at protonmail.com, I think. Anyway, if I got it wrong, it'll be on the screen somewhere. So go to that. Email them. Tell us what you want, and uh, we'll give you a free copy of my comedy special. And uh, if you leave a comment under this video, we will enter you to win it next time. So you could win it next time. So just leave a comment or a question. And as you can tell, I'm answering your questions. So leave me questions, anything and uh, hopefully I'll get to it next week. But yeah, next week I will, I, I promise you, there will be some good stuff on Redacted Tonight about what's going on with Julian Assange. Also, there will be that full interview with George Galloway. Uh, very important stuff, very important times and dark times. So if you're going to get angry, let's do it.